So, uh, hi, hola a todos. Uh, my name is Emilio Lozano, I'm from Spain, and I work at Moodle as the head of Workplace Solution. I'm a proud, um, I'm a product manager at heart and a long time Moodler, and I'm also a proud dad, and I promised my son that I was going to show you this picture. This is a sparrow, my son is fire also. Victor, a todo el mundo le encanta tu dibujo. Yeah, I'm so proud. Okay. Icebreaker check. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the learning catalog, a lot of it, of the sessions will be about that, and how it helps unlock uh, self-directed learning in Moodle Workplace. And I'll also cover the exciting features that are coming in 4.5, and I'll give you a glimpse into the future of <clears throat> Moodle Workplace. It's going to be an exciting journey, so please sit and uh, fasten your seatbelts and join me. So, in organizational context, prescribed learning um, and training in general has long been a fundamental way of uh, structuring the learning offer. And it's been the preferred approach uh, for organizations around the world for many years. Um, and although things have evolved since then, in the, especially in the recent years, prescribed learning, it remains an important uh, part of the organizational learning uh, process. So supporting prescribed learning was a no-brainer in our first uh, and our first priority when we launched Moodle Workplace. This, however, has, has allowed us to start creating the building blocks needed to take it to the next level. So um, learning paths are at the heart of prescribed learning in Workplace, and they are so flexible that L&D managers and HR reps can design them for employees in virtually any way uh, that you can imagine. So each itinerary is made of learning entities, and in Moodle Workplace, we offer three types of learning entities. We have courses, which are, uh, these are the foundational uh, learning entities in Moodle LMS, which Workplace inherits. We also have programs that are pre-built learning itineraries that can also be customized to create ad hoc learning paths. This is an out-of-the-box uh, learning itinerary. And then we have certifications which are recurring programs that are speci specifically designed for compliance training. So with these three building blocks, uh, l and and HR managers can prescribe learning in multiple ways. So they can empower managers to assign learnings to their teams using organization structure. So they can prescribe what they think their teams need to learn or uh, they can automate these learner, uh, learning assignments with, for example, things like assign all employees to the new onboarding program when they register, enroll all employees in the Australian office into a course on Australian legislation and things like that. They can do this automatically. Or they can create tailored and conditional learning pathways, more complex one. For example, uh, when employees in the sales department complete the onboarding program, then let's assign them to the induction for the sales department program. That's something that in Moodle Workplace is very easy to do. Or enroll all employees in the workplace course, and once they complete it, assign them to the health and safety certification that they need to retake annually. These are things that are built in in Workplace, and it's pretty simple to, to do. And all of this is powered uh, by our multi-tenancy feature, which maximize, sorry, maximize the content sharing and reuse across tenants. So it just multiplies everything. Okay. Then we introduce self-directed learning. So um, this is when the catalog came into play. The learning catalog provides learners with um, enhanced ways to discover and access learning opportunities. And, they, and it really empowers them to take control of their own learning journey. It integrates seamlessly with prescribed learning that, are, that we just mentioned, and for me, what I like to call the flywheel of learning, which is this. But um, let me use uh, Ben's journey as an example to explain what the flywheel of learning is. Uh, the avatar is fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons is purely coincidental. So uh, everything starts with the onboarding. So today is Ben's first day at the company, and he has automatically he has been automatically enrolled 
in the boarding program. So the first thing Ben sees on his dashboard is the courses in the boarding program. So when he gets to the platform, he knows what he, what he has to do. So sometime after, Ben needs to check something in one of the courses that he took previously. So he remembers that there was something in the platform that could help him with that. So he goes to, he logs into the platform, goes to the My Courses, and finds that course that he needed. Then, after some time, Ben has already finished all his courses and wants to see if there's anything interesting to learn. So he clicks, he logs in the platform, he clicks on the catalog page and discovers a course titled Teaching Languages with Moodle and thinks that it is very interesting, so he enrolls in it. And once he completed that, because you know, uh, Ben likes to learn a lot. Uh, ben reads the announcement of the latest Moodle AI subsystem, and he thinks, okay, I want to learn more about that. And he remembers there was a course in the, in, in the learning platform that was about AI in Moodle. So he goes to the catalog, searches for Aidan, searches for AI at Bola, he finds some courses on the topic and picks one. So every time Brett, sorry, did I say Brett? Every time Ben, uh, is assigned a course uh, or decides to take one uh, that he's interested in, the cycle continues. So it goes on and on and on, and it can start by anywhere. Okay, so you get the concept of this learning flywheel or flywheel of learning, but what comes first? So does it always need to start with prescribed learning? So traditionally in Moodle LMS, the choices to start the, the start page were very limited in Moodle, but not anymore. So now it is possible to set the catalog as a default start page, which is ideal for organizations that offer training courses publicly. So now we can just set the start page. This, the, the, that entry point of the learning flywheel, it could be anything. And with anything, I mean whichever work best for your learners. Okay, so you might be wondering, um, is that all? Is that life after self-directed learning? Can we take a step farther? And yes, we can. We can put the learners at the center. And how we do that? So we can go for the learner-centered approach, which in a nutshell, the learner-centered approach revolves around the idea that every learner is unique with different learning styles, preferences, and strengths, and the focus shifts from a prescription-driven driving approach to one that empowers people to become independent learners. Learners are encouraged to take an active role in their own education, making choices and decisions that save the learning experiences. This promotes a sense of ownership and responsibility as students become accountable for their own progress and growth. This is what also Marie, I think it was Marie, I don't remember which presentation, what did they call the student agency. So this is learner-centric approach. Okay, but um, now Matthew uh, will tell us about what learner-centric is for a learning and could, what could be, could, um, Sorry, that could look like in Moodle WordPress. And again, this avatar is fictitious and any resemblance with actual person is purely coincidental. So, um, as an employee with this in a learner-centric approach, I can find learning opportunities that match the skills I want to develop. I know which skills I need to master for my job and what I need to learn to advance my career. I get recommendations for learning experiences relevant to my goals and skills, and I can design my own learning journey. So enabling learning-centric education is a significant step, and it heavily relies on l and manager, learning designers, and trainers. And obviously, everything that Martin shows in his keynote could help with this. So platform, the platform can help with this job can empower educators and l and managers to change the shift, but uh, it's on them. But however, there are many ways that WordPress can support them on this journey, and skills management being one of the most important. So wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great if we had this in WordPress? So yeah, it will be. 
we um, right now is not still under the radar because there are many things that we're working on, but this is this definitely will be in the uh, sort of future, in the near future in workplace. Okay, but let's return to the present. Sorry because this image looks a bit dystopic with the, you know, with all the um, top part of it. I tried to hide it with the title. Okay, so Muro Workplace is uh, widely used across the globe by organizations and companies of all kinds, um, both in education and corporate environments, in serving anywhere from tens to millions of users. And it's a platform for all. And this is why we strive on design, uh, to design all features in Muro Workplace to work from this diverse group of organizations, whether they are small institutions, um, medium-sized businesses, governments, or even countrywide educational systems. And the features and enhancements that we have included in 4.5 are a great example of this, and I'm going to go through some of them. So Moodle WordPress 4.5 is uh, will be released in about two weeks, so it's in the open right now, but it's, everything is ready on 5 November, and all things that it will break, including everything in Moodle LMS 4.5, I'd like to highlight some of them. So in the catalog, we're going to have course featuring and a way to um, enhance the course price management. We have custom tenant domains and new ways of um, defining the start page in Workplace. So let's briefly go through them. First thing I wanted to highlight is the course featuring. This is, this is um, this is great for uh, L&D managers and, and HR people in general to spotlight courses. Enable them to create the content they most want learners to see. There are two ways that L&D managers can highlight courses in Moodle WordPress 4.5. They can use course highlighting, which is basically a way of selecting which courses should appear at the top of the list in all available courses or when, they, when users search for these courses, if there's any match, with the feature courses, it will appear on the top of the list. This is nice if you don't have too many feature courses or the, the feature courses are always the same. You don't have any seasonal campaigns or things like that. But if you, you want to go a step further, you can use feature courses, which in which case the highlighted courses can be displayed in a dedicated section in the catalog. And this feature is, is very useful for showcasing new, important, or recommended courses, making it easy for learners to find and focus on what matters the most. And this is a great tool for HR managers to actually recommend learning. This is what I've been designed to. Then we have the long-awaited custom tenant domains. This is something that partners in the room will love, but it's probably not so sexy to present here, but it's very important here. So this was an experimental feature before, but as an experimental feature was very uh, limited. So um, as I said, this is one of the most requested multi-tenancy features, and by using it, B2B customers can provide a fully customized and personalized experience for the clients. One WordPress installation supports multiple learning environments for various tenants, each with its custom URL. This is what this functionality enables. And how does it work? So now custom domains can be set for each tenant in the UI, and also in ten, uh, for tenant web services. And thanks to this, we can automatically detect the branding, authentication methods, and everything before the, um, before the user actually logs in. So we create this full immersion into the uh, tenancy, which means that you can share single installation for many multiple sites, and the users in this installation will not never notice that there's another world outside. This is like the uh, Truman Show, something similar, but incorporate training. And some functionality was included some time ago as an experimental feature as see, but now this is a full feature, and this is nice. Um, then we have the new start page options. This is, as, this is something I was briefly mentioned in the learning flywheel. So uh, now administrators in Moodle LMS, because we also did this in Moodle LMS, and Moodle Workplace have more options than ever to choose the start page for the sites. They can, now, they can now fully customize the site style page so it's so that the first thing that users see is a fully branded and more personalized introduction to the site. To achieve this, we have extended the full style page setting in Moodle LMS, and we have allowed plugin developers in Moodle LMS to designate their plugins as eligible for style pages. So plugin developers can create the style pages in Moodle LMS thanks to this. 
And also we have made use of this extension that we have added to LMS to make, to actually add the catalog and custom pages to the start page configuration. But with custom pages, this is particularly important because custom pages allows for creating unique start pages with the building blocks that you have available in Moodle. So thanks to this functionality, we have uh, replaced the old front page in Moodle with something that is fully customizable. And in WordPress, you can actually add any block in there, including reports if you want. So this is what we've done. And this is great for branding. So a couple of more things that even if there's a slide that is still very important. Uh, we have added a new feature to pull the course price from the enrollment plugins automatically into the brand new number course custom field. So this basically means that admins just can set their enrollment plugins, uh, pay the enrollment plugins in their courses, um, add this type of custom fields and not don't worry about updating the course price because it will be updated automatically taking the price from the enrollment plugins. And we also added a way for managers to allocate the team members to certifications and programs from the team overview block. So they don't need to go anywhere else. They, they can just go to the My Teams page, and from there, they can manage all the allocations for the team. They can see their progress, and soon they, all, they will also be able to enroll their teammates into courses. This is something that um, Moodle Partners is going to contribute soon. And this is also great for book enrollment. Okay, so let's get into the future with a uh, glimpse into it. So um, the first thing I want to talk about again on this is the learning catalog. In WordPress 4.5, we're going to support the most used WordPress feature in the catalog programs. And as I said, uh, supporting programs is a major milestone for on-demand learning in Moodle WordPress. In version 4.3, before the catalog was introduced, 83% of the WordPress sites used programs. So this means that by supporting programs in the catalog and allowing self-enrollment, we're going to benefit four out of five users in WordPress when their site is upgraded to 4.5. And I even I suspect that some of the sites have haven't been upgraded to 4.4 because of this. So now that they can use programs in the catalog, they're going to probably move when we have it to 5.0 if they have done it uh, before. And that's huge. So um, to achieve this, we're going to introduce a new um, API to support allocation plugins in programs like we do in courses, and implement these core allocation plugins so learners can self-enroll and purchase programs the same way they do in courses. And Banamis will find this very familiar because as you can see, that's the program page, the cover page, and you can see the enrollment methods in there. This is a prototype, by the way. And then once we do that, we will just add programs to the catalog, which means that all functionality that we have already added to the catalog for courses will be available in, in programs. The extended search API, which is super efficient, all the ways that we have to find and discover programs, all the featuring for courses will be available in programs, everything. And that's just in 5.0. So this will finally close the circle of the catalog and all the existing, as I was saying, and, and future functionality in the catalog will be even better because we'll support programs. So next up is multi-tenancy. This is something that we're also going to work in 5.0. It is very important for admins and plugin developers and for ourselves because it allows us to make virtually anything multi-tenant in a more sustainable way. So let me explain this with an example. Right now, um, if you if the plugin is not multi-tenant, you cannot have different configuration of that plugin for different tenants. So let's say that you have an authentication plugin like OpenAuth. If it wasn't multi-tenant, you could you could just make it to connect to one provider. So you couldn't use it you know, across all your tenants. We made that plugin multi-tenant as uh, and we did also for SAML too. So it supports different configuration. But doing that requires some ad hoc development and it does not really ideal for admins because it wasn't integrated into the site administration. And we have done the same thing with many other things because in WordPress we support many uh, multi-tenant settings. So what we are doing right now is introducing a new centralized management system to enable plugin uh, developers and ourselves to make their plugins multi-tenant 
and for admins to decide whether they want to uh, allow overriding these settings or not, and what are the settings across all tenants. Just imagine that you have a site with hundreds of tenants, hundreds of tenants, we have a couple, uh, it would be completely impossible if you had to configure settings for different tenants if you didn't have this. So this is what is coming in 5.0. And last, and but not least, definitely, because this is uh, also a very way to feature, we have the ability to add visual insights in Report Builder. So this is basically adding graphs and data visualizations to reports, which is one of the most requested features in Moodle WordPress. Um, during the, we're, we just finished the discovery phase, and this is waiting for design. During the discovery phase, we, we have been looking at these four things. Uh, first thing, how the report will be um, consumed, what, how is the visualization for the end user, what's the easiest way of presenting these visualizations to users, how to configure graphs in, in, a, in, in a simple way for custom reports so they can add these graphs to the custom reports, not only to reports of the systems, how a user can add graphs to the dashboard because that's, that's also one of the uh, best use case for this, and how these graphs can be exported because in corporate sectors, this is also a must. We have explored all these options. We have, um, we have um, a clear way of um, designing this. We know what we want to do, and now we just need to start with the design, and after that, the development. 5.0 will be the first uh, Moodle WordPress release ever with graphical reporting. It will have some of it, the essential part, and the big part of this functionality is coming in 5.1. And before I wrap up, uh, I would like to um, tell you, ask you that if you want to contribute to shape the future of Moodle, please join our experience lab and so you can participate in user research, user testing and codes and activities. This is not only for Moodle LMS, by the way. In Moodle Workplace, we also use the research lab. So if you want to contribute to the Moodle, Moodle Workplace development with this, you can also do it uh, with through the experience lab. And that was all. So I don't know if we have time for questions. Thank you. Let me put the sparrow back. Okay. Any questions? Do we have time? Okay. So you can find me around. I'm more than happy to talk about workplace, always. Thank you very much.